Good morning, church. Here we are at the end of our series, What's Wrong with Saul? Saul, king of Israel for 42 years. Saul, Israel's first king. Saul, judgment on Israel, prophesied through Samuel. Saul started well, but went from bad to worse quite quickly in his reign. Saul did some things right. He did remove all the mediums and spiritists from the land, according to Deuteronomy 18, 10 to 12 and Leviticus. But now we find Saul, who spent much of his reign in pursuit of David, wasting Israel's resources, trying to get David, well, trying to murder him. You see, Saul knew, Samuel told him, that his kingdom had been taken from him and given to another. But Saul wanted to hold on to his kingdom. His identity, everything was wrapped up in his kingship. Saul suffered fits of rage. He tried to kill David, murder him. He even tried to murder his own son. And he murdered God's priests. Slaughtered many of them. That was in last week's message. Saul was demonically driven, tormented by evil spirits, lived a life of anxiety and fear in rebellion against God. And today he adds to his sins. Let's look at 1 Samuel 28, starting at verse 3. Saul and the witch of Endor. Sounds like a chapter out of Lord of the Rings. Starting at verse 3. Now Samuel was dead and all Israel had mourned for him and buried him in his own town of Ramah. Saul had, ex had expelled the mediums and spiritists from the land. He did what was right. The Philistines assembled and came up and set camp at Shunem, while Saul gathered all Israel and set up camp at Gil Gilboa. When Saul saw the Philistine army, he was afraid and terror filled his heart. He inquired of the Lord. But of course, the Lord did not answer him. God had stopped communicating with Saul. The Lord didn't answer him by dreams or Urim or prophets. So Saul said to his attendants, find me a woman who is a medium so that I may go and inquire of her. What's he thinking now? He couldn't hear God. So he was going to hear Satan. He knew the roots of mediums and spiritualism and witchcraft was all satanic he knew that so Saul adds to his already huge list of rebellion against the Lord he would have known Leviticus 20 verse 6 where God says I will set my face against anyone who turns to mediums and spiritists to prostitute themselves by following them and I will cut them off from their people he must have known that Full of fear, but no fear of the Lord. His attendant said, there is a medium in Endor. So Saul disguises himself, putting on other clothes. And at night, he and two men went to the woman. Consult a spirit for me, he said, and bring up for me the one that I name. But the woman said to him, Surely you know what Saul has done. He has cut off all the mediums and spiritists from the land. Why have you set a trap to bring my life to an end? Saul swore to her by the Lord, As surely as the Lord lives, you will not be punished for this. Then the woman asked, Whom shall I bring up for you? Bring up Samuel, he said. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out at the top of her voice, and said to Saul, why have you deceived me? You are Saul. It's funny how it, no how it notes this. When the woman saw Samuel, you see this deception of spiritism. They don't, they cannot bring back dead people. They're not speaking to dead people. They're speaking to something called a familiar spirit, a demon masquerading as a relative or dead person. For Jesus states in uh, a parable in Luke 16, 26, and he says, between the living and the dead, so this is Luke 16, 26, between the living and the dead, there's a great chasm so that no one can cross over. 
So this woman screams when she sees Samuel because it's not what usually takes place. But God has made an exception, a further rebuke to Saul through Samuel, who Saul chose to stop listening to. But here he is wanting to hear from him. The king said to her, don't be afraid. So Saul says, don't be afraid. What do you see? The woman said, I see a ghostly figure coming out out of the earth. What does he look like? Saul asked. An old man wearing a robe is coming up, she said. Then Saul knew it was Samuel. And he bowed down and prostrated himself face to the ground. Samuel said, see the Bible states Samuel said. Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? I'm in great distress, Saul said. The Philistines are fighting against me. God has departed from me. Actually, Saul departed from God. Anyway, God has departed from me. He no longer answers me, either by prophets or by dreams. So I've called on you to tell me what to do. Samuel said, why do you consult me? Now that the Lord has departed from you and become your enemy. You see, Samuel spoke the words of God. Did Saul really think Samuel was going to tell him something different? The Lord has done, verse 17, the Lord has done what he predicted through me, Samuel said. The Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hands and given it to one of your neighbours, to David. Because you did not obey the Lord or carry out his fierce wrath against the Amalekites, the Lord has done this to you today. The Lord will deliver both Israel and you into the hands of the Philistines. And tomorrow, you and your sons will be with me. What does he mean by that? He means you're all going to die tomorrow. The Lord will also give the army of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. And in chapter 31, that's exactly what happens. Saul, his three sons, his armour bearer and Israel lay slaughtered before the Philistines. Immediately, Saul fell full length on the ground, filled with fear because of Samuel's words. His strength was gone, for he had eaten nothing all that day and all that night. When the woman came to Saul and saw that he was greatly shaken, she said, Look, your servant has obeyed you. I took my life in my hands and did what you told me to do. Now please listen to your servant and let me live <coughs> and give you some food so that you may eat and have strength and go on your way. Saul refused to eat, but his men joined the woman in urging him and he listened to them, got up from the ground and sat on a couch. Then they all eat unleavened bread. She kills the fatted calf and they go on their way. And Saul's life ends tragically. But after Saul comes David. So next week we'll be leaving Saul and his children and looking at a new man, a man who's not after his own kingdom but a man who's after the kingdom of God. And things do change for Israel. And through David, through David's lineage, comes a kingdom that has no end. And that's the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, our passion must be all about you and your kingdom. That must be our greatest passion. For if we follow any other passion, if we have passions that are all about us, Lord, we'll be driven by them. And we do not want to make the same mistakes as Saul. We don't want to be after building our own kingdoms here on the earth because we're just passing through. As your word says, we're just like morning dew, here today, gone tomorrow. But thank you for that privilege that we can live our lives all about your eternal kingdom. That the parts we play 
and not as big as the greatest story. Lord, we're part of something eternal. So we thank you for your grace upon our lives. We thank you for your calling upon our lives. And I pray that we will be those who remain in the Garden of Gethsemane and will constantly say, your will be done in our lives. Your kingdom come, even in us and through us. Amen. Well, see you next week with a better character, King David, Israel's first good king. Bye for now.